Hello boys and girls, Alex here. This is the latest puzzle that I've been working on. Um, I got the pattern off Steve Good. Again, you know, he's a bloody brilliant source for scroll sawing and if you extrapolate that to laser and CNC work. What he's done, he created uh, what he calls a snake pattern or snake puzzle, snake jigsaw. That's basically what it is. Um, I've made this stand to stand it up there, you'll see see the production of it later on. What I have done, let just make sure you can see that, yeah. What I've done is I've taken his basic pattern and I've put little skull and crossbones on top of each piece. That's to identify the actual orientation. You can do it one of two ways, either do it, um, solve the puzzle with the, uh, the skulls up or the skulls down. Having the skulls up makes it a little bit easier because the skulls are vertical so at least you know the orientation of the actual puzzle. Alternatively you can have the skull face down. Now this back is not the puzzle itself it's actually just a pattern, a cheat sheet that you can then use lay down beside it and uh, use this pattern to do it on. But as you can see without the puzzle you don't know which way it's facing and that item there while well you can say it's oh that's a outside because of that curve it's an outside piece but that could be down there could be there or could be there so it could be in any places so you appreciate that without this solution it's actually a very difficult puzzle it only comes in 57 pieces but trust me it is a bloody difficult puzzle the different shapes make it easy however um, that's basically it. What I have done as well is that, I'll put that aside, I've made a bigger one. There you are. You can see the bigger one that I've got next to it as you can see it's probably about twice the size of the smaller one, exactly the same proportion. I haven't bothered to color the border. I don't know, I'm in two minds whether I should have colored it black like this one. Some people actually liked it that way, so alright, I compromised. Um, I personally like this, but hey, who knows. They both virtually work the same way. Um, the difference is I'll put this one aside only because the big one, it's bigger pieces, easier to work on and maybe easier to demonstrate how the functionality, how it fits together and how it works. Okay, I'll put it aside and break, out, break the other one down. Okay, here I am with the big one. Um, as you can see, there you are, there's a, the stand. Very, actually they're bloody quite nifty little stands. Um, you've got the puzzle as I said, two-sided. On the back, you've actually got the solution now. I don't know whether this will come out easy or not. It's actually a, a very tight fit. As I often said, the laser is uh, a brilliant fit. There you are. And I'll show you that in a second. And I've also got the a uh, pattern here. Um, there. It's there, ah, comes off. Um, initially, that's what I was going to do, just uh, provide that and nothing else. Um, and that was going to be the base. Then I put this on only because if you decide to make the scale with the skulls up, it's that orientation. If you decide to go, hang on, I'll put that there so the pieces don't fall out. If you should decide to go the other way, the skulls are down, but it's now a mirror of the pattern. And you might not, put it this way, if you've got that there, you might be able to marry up the patterns as well. So I put it on both sides. And then I decided, damn it, I'll cut this bit out, put it underneath. You can put it aside and use it as a cheat sheet. What I've also done is put little holes in here so you can poke your finger in there and push out pieces. Um, I don't know why because uh, 
it's not like you're going to necessarily put the piece in the wrong, well, you might put the piece in the wrong place, but you won't notice it's in the wrong place until you get right up near the end and you've got one piece left and it doesn't actually fit in there and you might want to pop. As you can see, if I, whoops, no, you can't see, I'll go this way. If you try and pull that one out, a whole heap of them will start falling out. So it's much easier if you pop it out with your little pinky, like that and put it back in again. As you can see, the back of it, no pattern on it, so suddenly now you, when you, if you follow the curves, oh, that could go, gee, that could go there, or if you start looking at the size of it, could fit in there, that's if you didn't have the pattern, maybe even down there. So, uh, as I said, it's a very simple puzzle, but by God, well, few pieces, but it's not what I'd classify as a simple puzzle. Alright, um, I'll go in and sort of like uh, give you a few demos of actually how I made it, or a rough facsimile of it, and then um, I'll get back to you, and we'll maybe show you how the puzzle actually works. This is one of the uh, smaller puzzles that I engraved. Um, basically the first pass is just to engrave the skulls on it. As you can see I've actually filled in some of those so I can then sand it. But to fill these, the ones up the top, just a bit of this timber mate. Take a small piece, corner piece, and just go over each one of these, filling them in taking care not to push down too hard because if you do what you finish up doing is uh, breaking off the eyes of the skull because they're like little pylons sticking up after the engraver has uh, got rid of all the stuff around the eyes type of thing if you get what I'm get my message but anyway that's how I sort of put it on it's a bit of a mess, but on with the Merca, 240 grit uh, paper, uh, Abrolon paper on it. Now I normally get about that much off it, and I feel around, and if there are any hollows or dents that hasn't been filled properly, I'll then fill that in. Often I usually need about two passes to get this working properly uh, or get it totally filled. Um, naturally I do the whole lot in one go. Once I've done that, it then goes back to the laser and then I actually cut, cut out the outline of the snake um, to basically this pattern. This is actually just a uh, call it for nothing else but say a cheat sheet, it tells you how the puzzle goes together um, again more on this later um, but yeah uh, they basically that pattern gets cut out on top of that, this goes back in the laser gets cut out on top of that and then the process goes on for uh, buffing and uh, oh sorry, first I'll uh, usually give it a coat of tongue oil, let it dry for quite a few days. Um, well actually that's a lot of bullshit because I should let it dry for about seven days but I only give it about three days or four days. But that's basically because putting it on the buffer creates a lot of friction which I'm hoping will dry out the tongue oil, at least the surface tongue oil. Alright, so that's it with that. Once the puzzle is cut out, you'll finish up with this frame and you'll also finish up with either a cutout like this. This is a cutout which is the actual uh, solution or you have the individual little pieces in here. What I do is put it back into the frame and you'll find that actually some of these 
are very, you can see how wobbly it is. They do break off, and that's one of the reasons why I have that middle piece to reinforce it, and that's why I have three layers to reinforce this soft, uh, uh, wobbly bit. I put it back in the frame, and if it's individual pieces, I put a backing board onto it, and then with this frame, um, I'll then, assuming that doesn't fall out, I've got a backing board. Um, no, better still. Um, no, I, I'm not going to go and get the backing board. Um, I'll take this over to the buffer and then buff it, and that frame will hold the, the individual pieces together and hold that piece in place. Um, as I said, uh, I'm not going to bore you too much detail. I think somewhere I've got a picture of me going through the motions of buffing. Um, I've taken this whole bloody video out of sequence. I'm sort of taking it piecemeal and I'll have to edit it or, or well, I don't edit it, I just put it together and I hope I can put it together in a decent order and that it'll make sense. Okay, back to the next, off to the next part. Here I am at the buffing wheel. What I would, or what I have done, and I'm not going to show you now because it's already been done, but I'll go through the motion. Um, I've got this frame, and what I used to do was put the actual individual jigsaw pieces in the frame, assuming that these were the individual pieces, they aren't, but that fits in there. And then, through that, because uh, of that, I can then just go through the buffing. To actually do the frame itself, and this is what I've done for, that's why this is all black is because I put that inside the actual frame, the real frame, and buffed it up uh, because the frame was painted black, buffed it up and of course the black has come on here. Um, as I said I won't do it for the, oh again I use the same process for the actual um, template, or not template, the cheat sheet snake, and uh, that's it, but again I'll do it for the big one, I just go through the motions. I'm not going to go through the buffing because, hell, it's, it's boring and it's just repetitive. The only thing is I go through the um, triple E compound, which is this unit, the white diamond, which is this, and over there on my lathe I have the canubra wax. But anyway, let's see. This is a frame that I'm going to actually put the big puzzle in. Here's that cutout that I use as a packer, only because to stop breaking, if I didn't have this, see these things here, as I'm buffing it, they could potentially break off. They probably won't, but they could potentially. So what I normally do, turn this on, give it a bit of a charge of the wax, and off you go. Now, you might be able to see the shine on it, I don't know what the camera's like, but again, I do that, I cover all that, then I move over to this one, zip through, do that, flip it over, what I can do is take this snake, upside down or the other side up, put it on the other side, and then zip over this side. And that way I'll get both sides done. Anyway, I'm going to turn the camera off. It's boring shitless, so that's it. Ooh. To hold the puzzle in an upright position, I made these little, or cut these little pieces out of uh, MDF to make up a stand, and painted it, or stained it black. Now if I use my normal buffer to polish these up, I'd get them dirty as you can see here. So I actually uh, moved from the big buffers to the small buffers, swapped my wax buffer out to this, and this is actually, I think, hang on, move that, that's the wax, swapped that over for the 
Oops. Tripoli. And I can then polish it off with that. The reason why I swap them out is because you can see when I the one of the borders when I was actually polishing it up black, you can see how it spread the black all over the pattern. And as you can see, that's got dark. And if I uh, turn this on onto a normal piece of MDF, you can see how it's, oh, it's not much, but it does start to stain the black a bit. So I've decided to use these. Look, all I really do is polish, go through the grits. Again, I'm not going to waste time showing you how to polish the, uh, you've seen me do one. I have to be more careful with these ones because they've got weird shapes and it often, uh, the wheel can actually grab it out of my hand and spin it across the room. That's why I've actually, I only need two, but I've cut three because nearly every time I manage to break one. Alright, look, I'll go on with that and once I've finished it, um, we'll go back into the other room and glue it up. Getting ready to glue up the stand for the two snake, or two of the snake puzzles, puzzles, a big one and a large one. Well, I can say it's lucky I've got enough of these small clamps. Um, it's a very simple process. Well, get the things right. Slip that in there, and again, because of the laser, the fit is perfect off the machine, you know, no sanding, no mucking around. Um, well, hang on, let's get this right. Um, this is just a dry fit, or attempted dry fit, and that's effectively what it's going to look like or at least the back side of it's going to look like. Look, it's going to be hard to hold on to it. I'd rather not waste film showing you the glue up. I mean, I'm using super glue um, only because I've already polished the things and the PVA glue certainly won't hold. And look, I'll get back to you after I've uh, glued it up. Yo, where's that button? Try. Turn it off? No, I haven't. Come on. As I said, lucky I've got enough clamps. Um, gee, I've got a few more left, but uh, yeah, running out very quickly. It, uh, for such a small bloody thing, it takes up a lot of clamps. All right, back to you when it's uh, dried and uh, I might go and have a vino. During the buffing, um, I popped a couple of pieces with the buffing wheel and it threw it all over the place and you can see here it's broken off one of the corners dented a few of the other pieces same thing with the head of the snake look it's not much I can notice that you you probably wouldn't I didn't like it so what I thought I'd do is put that aside for these pieces that were damaged I've actually just cut off those pieces out of the laser. I've kept them in the, uh, the cutout so it can use as a holding receptacle for the piece while I'm trying to sand it. I've filled it with uh, Timbermate wood filler but you'll know all that from previous uh, video or parts of the video. So what I'll do is I'll try and clean this up get out my mercury, it's got 240 grit in it the intention is to sand off that thing and get as much of the uh, burn mark away as possible so let's try it there it goes, Pop, popped out again, put it back in and keep going. Actually, what I might 
I do is put it on a piece of hardwood. This will do. Just so it won't sink down into the rubber mat and that way it'll stay that was much better flip it over to get the flip side now just looking at this it looks as though I've done a decent job filling the engraving so I don't really have to give it another coat of the wood filler. Now let's clean this one up. All I did was go into Corel Draw and just extract or not extract, uh, delete all the parts that didn't need to be done and uh, Flip it over. Right. As you can see, it's uh, done the job. What I will do, and I'll take this off camera. As you can see there, actually uh, that piece it went flying, oh, sorry I rephrased it, that piece went flying, I cut another piece and while I was doing it I found it so I put it back and it wasn't dented so I've kept it. As you can see because of the laser it cuts it out perfectly and it fits, oops I don't know why I cut those ones, I think I just stuffed up, but here we go as you can see it just, come on, don't prove me wrong. There you are. Now why, why did it take, so uh, maybe because uh, I don't know why it uh, didn't go in so easily. But not to worry, what I'll do now is I'm going to tongue oil that, tongue oil that, take it over to the buffer and through this inside there, I'll buff it up, put it in and we'll come back. Well I've got you here, this is a perfect example of why those that push gap is there, I can now just pop these two out without having to remove all the rest of it. There you are. Okay, back to the drawing board. Okay, Here's the puzzle in pieces. I've actually taken them out, but I've kept them grouped only because it's A, going to be quicker to assemble. You don't want to be sitting there watching me assemble this bloody thing and making a complete ass of myself. So, I've kept it together so I can potentially block put them, to put them in. Um, as you can see, you'd put them in one at a time if they were there, and what you would do is, where the hell is it? Here we are. Use this little beast as the template or as the um, solution. And let's just say you've got it there. And oh, as you can see, it's a bloody tight fit. However, having said that, let's pop those out again. See, now you see these little holes. If you decide to go the other way, and have them all blank side up. As you can see, you don't know which, what the actual orientation of that is. At least with the skulls pointing up. And again, I don't know whether the you can see that in the camera. I'll try and give a. Here we are. You can see the skull pointing up. You know that that's the orientation. It's not going. That that means the bloody thing's upside down or sideways. Um, so, I'll put that back otherwise I'll lose it. 
But not having that, this is going to be a pain and naturally it's bad enough having to mirror it. That's why I've done it on the reverse side. So at least you can actually, although I cheated, I put the eyes in there when there's no eyes. But you can actually get an idea and potentially match the size with that where it goes. But I'm going to put it in the right way, so let's go back the other way, poke those things out. And I'll start putting it together and then hopefully, with a bit of luck, I might be able to fast forward my uh, video. So you're not there for the next three hours watching me put this bloody thing together. But if I move it in one piece, in a block, you can see it's going to be it's still a tight fit. Oh. Yeah, look, that, that laser, I've got to admit, it does a brilliant job. And you'll get the same out of a CNC. And having said that, um, it's designed to be done on a scroll saw, so it's not like, it's not doable. Steve Good does it, and he makes it available to everybody else. Okay, now if I'm going to fast forward, I'll probably fast forward now and stop talking. Because you don't want to hear me go <laughs> gibberish. Guys, I've nearly finished it now, so I might as well keep talking. Now what you might do, and I've done that with other puzzles, I actually put that, usually when I want to finish, I put that under that and then put the solution on top. But as I said, because I've made this now, um, I don't really need this. Um, I'm actually quite surprised how good the uh, laser does that. that. All that is is laminated uh, uh, printout, A3 printout, and cut out on the laser. I mean, it's a pretty mean feat to try and get it lined up properly, but once you have, um, Bob's your uncle. And then, just for posterity, you stow that in there. Oops, make sure these go back into place. Slap it on the stand, and you've got yourself a nice little presentation piece. Now, how does that look? No, you can't see a bloody thing. You've got yourself a nice presentation piece and uh, um, a puzzle as well. And look, you know, it's a bit high, so usually that's the way I'd probably store it so it doesn't take up as much room and hey I can get it in the bloody camera woohoo okay boys and girls I think that's about it oh hang on um, as I said I've got a well hang on I'll go and get the other one okay these are the three that I've actually made the big one up the back the little black one that was my first one actually and I'm now making another one um, because as I said I couldn't decide whether to go black or white and yeah I don't mind the white because it sort of blends in with it so it's sort of it's a puzzle so it's supposed to be puzzling the other one sticks out like dog's ball so yeah um, I'm still in two minds it hasn't been completely finished because as I said when I was buffing it these pieces flew out and broke um, pieces broke off and uh, got dented really um, so at the moment um, I've got it tongue oiled I'm waiting for the tongue oil to dry a bit before I start buffing it to put it in place but rather than hold up production and uh, um, uh, releasing the video and doing the write up for Lumberjocks because effectively this video is really designed uh, to supplement uh, an article I'm writing for Lumberjocks if anybody wants to check it out in Lumberjocks, um, I might put it down the bottom of the thing, but uh, I go by the name of Little Black Duck in Lumberjocks, so if you want to see the write-up in Lumberjocks, uh, get into Lumberjocks and search for Little Black Duck, one word. Catch you later, boys and girls. Bye. Sorry, I forgot to mention one of the designs of the smaller ones. 
and I suppose it is an important part. You'll notice it's made up of uh, three sandwiches or three laminates of MDF, the frame, the puzzle on both sides and on the inside there's this uh, smaller cutout um, to uh, and it serves basically two purposes A give some strength to these narrow pieces so it's glued on they won't fall out but more so when you get down to these little pieces here and up there the little finger hole that I made in the big one um, I just couldn't get something in there I'd have to use a pencil or a screwdriver to pop it out this way I've got the channel this lip lets the puzzle sit on it and I can still just get my little finger in there down the bottom or actually I, it's not a little finger I've actually got to use something a little bit sharper like uh, that to pop it out as you can see down there however if I just had uh, half inch holes which I have in the other one you'd be popping heaps of them out with the other one I could have a half inch hole behind each individual piece here I can't Anyway, I hopefully thinking that that's the last bullshit I'm going to say for this video. So, catch you later. And with all the bloody, this uh, COVID, whatever, corona bullshit, keep safe everyone. Bye for now.